In this class, we're going to talk about the prisoner's dilemma. Before introducing the dilemma, I want to read a quote from Adam Smith. It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own self-interest. We address ourselves not to their humanity, but to their self-love and never talk to them about our own necessities, but of their advantages. Adam Smith thought that in a free market, things work because everyone is trying to act in their own self-interest. And by doing so, many goods are produced, the price is self-regulated by supply and demand, and we get to the best possible outcome. He called this the invisible hand. The key idea is that if we all act in self-interest, we will be better off. Mathematician John Nash, featured in the film Beautiful Mind, uh, challenged this idea. He discovered that in certain competitive situations, the most rational thing to do from an individual perspective does not yield the best result for the group. Nash's discovery is on the basis of the prisoner's dilemma. The prisoner's dilemma goes like this. Imagine that there are two prisoners, Mr. A and Mrs. B. They were arrested for selling drugs and they will each get three years in prison for the police suspects that the prisoners work together in a series of uh, home robberies. But they have no proof. They offer them the following deal. If one snitches and the other one stays silent, the one that snitches gets zero years and the other one gets ten years. If both snitch on each other, they each get five years. If both stay silent, they each get three years, which was their original sentence. The problem with this scenario is this. Let's say you are Mr. A, and you are trying to decide what to do. You think. What will Mrs. B do? Mrs. B can do two things. She can either snitch or she can stay silent. So those are the two options. Either Mrs. Miss B snitches or she stays silent. Now remember, you are Mr. A. So let's say the option is Mrs. B is going to snitch for sure. So if she snitches, I should snitch as well. Otherwise I get 10 years and Mrs. B gets zero years. But if Mrs. B stays silent, then I, Mr. A, should definitely snitch since in that case, I would get off free with zero years and Mrs. B will stay in prison. In these types of competitive situations, when there is no binding agreement, the rational thing to do is to not cooperate, at least from the point of view of the individual. John Nash realized that in these situations, neither member will cooperate and the result will be what he called Nash's equilibrium, a result that is, that is worth worse than if both parties had cooperated. Unfortunately, the prisoner's dilemma appears in many real-world scenarios. Examples are the tragedy of the commons, overfishing and climate change. The tragedy of the commons is usually presented with this example. Imagine that there's a common land where all the cows can graze. So 
Everyone uh, can bring their cows and everyone has an individual incentive to let their cows graze a little longer. What happens then is that more and more cows graze a little bit longer and it ends up depleting the commons. A uh, real world contemporary example of this is overfishing. Each individual fishing company has an incentive to fish a little bit more and get more profits, but if they all do, soon there'll be no fish in the ocean. The final example is climate change. Um, each country has an incentive to pollute a little bit more to get ahead. They have their own economic reasons and so forth. But in each, uh, in all of these cases, each individual company, country feels justified to take a little bit more than their share for many reasons. From, from their individual perspective, uh, it is rational, but from a group perspective, it's a disaster. The issue behind the prisoner's dilemma appears in Plato's Republic. In a section about justice, Glaucon says to Socrates that when in a competitive situation, if you can, you can either win all or lose all, everyone would prefer to win. However, Glaucon says, because men are afraid of being in the losing side, they create rules that balance things out. He says justice is a compromise between the best, which is win all, and the worst, which is lose all. The rules are a way to change the rewards of a prisoner's dilemma type of situation. Criminals, for instance, have their own example of these types of rules. Uh, the expression, snitches get stitches, is an example. This effectively changes the incentive to snitch in a prisoner's dilemma type of situation. In the case of overfishing, we can create rules about overfishing that make it not financially worthwhile to do it with severe punishments. The case of climate change is particularly difficult. This is because it is close to impossible to create rules worldwide and to make sure they are being followed. However, we can still try to change the payoffs so that it is worthwhile for companies to create no more than a certain amount of carbon emissions. I hope you liked learning about the prisoner's dilemma in how it relates to many issues that we are facing today.